Always a chance to speak with the best is something that I will take up whenever it's offered because the best is blessed. And here's Max Holloway taking on the Korean zombie uh, very, very soon in Singapore. So uh, tell me about why this fight was some, so appealing to you. Obviously an OG of the uh, division, and those are the type of fights that get you out of bed. Yeah, I mean, you, you know Korean Zombie was just, you know, one of those guys that been around forever. He's been there before I was even here. And he's one of those guys, like, I'm going to end up fighting this guy one day. And um, that day came, that day is coming soon, you know, in August 26th. So I look forward to it, you know. You know, at the end of the day, I can't wait, you know. Um, the saying is, you're only as good as your last fight. I was uh, I was blessed enough to have Arnold Allen. But before that fight, uh, when Arnold Allen, the whole media talk was like, I was done and this and that and blah, blah, because of the bulk fight. I mean, I kind of see the same talking about, about Korean Zombie because his last fight was the bulk fight. But I believe it's been over a year now. He, he had time to, to rest, to recoup take care of injuries, mentally, physically, his personal life, whatever he had to do, he take care of it. He know what it takes to be at a championship level. He knows what it takes. So I, I'm getting ready for the best Korean zombie that the world's going to ever see, you know. This guy got timed off. Time off can, can mean great stuff for some people, especially in this sport. So, you know, I, I can't wait. You talk about people writing you off or saying that, that you were done after uh, that last Volkanovski fight, but do you go online a lot? Like, where do you find that information? Do you use it as bulletin board material to kind of get you excited for your next fight? I just heard, man. People talk. You know, I mean, we live in a social media stuff. You, you see writing, you see medias. I mean, even with this one, bro, even with it, with that, with me being uh, uh, such a big uh, favorite and this and that, I'm like, if we both, if I did not fight the Arnold fight, this fight would be in a whole different light right now. To be, to let's be completely honest with that, you know, just because I went out there, I did a performance against a guy in, who, in Arnold, who, uh, who a lot thought should have got the the next title fight, you know, and it was on a crazy win streak, and I went out there and did what I did, and you know that that whole fight was just on my mind was just still here, you know, I was reminding people that we're still here, we're still here. The only thing that's on my mind on this fight is uh, undeniable, man undeniable put a stamp on it and uh move on to the next do you look yourself up on youtube by any chance like that's what i'm curious about because i don't hear a lot of people say max holloway's done but i went on youtube today and looked your name up and then there's all these videos like is max holloway done or is, is max holloway's best days behind whenever i look up any fighter it seems like that's what the videos that are being made maybe that's what people click on but i'm curious if that's the kind of stuff that you see when you when you look yourself up on youtube if that is something you do no i don't i don't i did not see that but i know uh... I uh, used to hear the naysayers here and there, so it's what it is. I, that's funny that 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 <laughs> that you said that. Uh. Well, you too. I mean, I have to look you up because I'm I'm researching you for this interview. But it happens with every fighter. I look, and even with when I'm interviewing Dana White, I look up Dana White, and it's like Dana White furious at Yuri Prokashka, but like nothing actually has happened. It's just people wanting to click people to click on their videos. Click uh, clickbait, bro. We, we we live in a time of clickbaiting. Well, it seems like it's, it's gone over to that space for sure uh, over on YouTube, people with their, their thumbnails and all that. I noticed you actually have your own YouTube channel where you're doing a lot of different fight previews. Uh, what, what made you decide to do that? I just want to do it, bro. I stream, uh, I stream fights. Everybody on my stream been begging, like, hey, let's do breakdowns or do reactions. Can you do this? So I kind of just do it with them. I, the breakdowns we do with them. The reactions I do by myself. But the breakdowns is fun. And then I actually get to learn. I just get to learn uh, some of these other guys coming up because a lot of guys they tease me. I'm like I'm a, I'm an actual casual because I like I said I didn't watch fights before. I had to ask I actually I actually had to ask one of our one of our agents, one of our uh, agents that's in that's with Chosen, you know, not Tim Daniel, and I had to ask him because that guy that guy is a real. He watches everything, bro. He watches prelims on and every card, you know, the, the whatever like. He you know where you work and whatever. He's he's almost like an investigator. It's kind of it's kind of amazing. So he gives you the notes for for your previews. When I ask, when I ask him, when I ask him, and if it looks like I don't know what I'm talking about, then then you know I did not I did not send the text. <laughs> They're tuning in to see blessed, right? I mean the 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 insight and the analysis I think is secondary to just getting to spend time with Max Holloway and listen to you talk about fights. <laughs> I guess so. 
So if I ask you about this weekend's fight, uh, I mean, we're, we're recording this uh, in, in advance of UFC 292. Aljamain Sterling is saying he'd like to move up to 145 uh, if, if he's able to beat Sean O'Malley this weekend. How do you think he would do, and how do you think his style would, would fare at 145 pounds? I think he'd be fine. I think he'd be fine up at this weight class. Uh, a lot of people keep talking about him being a weight bully or whatever, which is kind of ridiculous. I don't think so. I know, I know he gets big. But he makes 35, you know. So at the end of the day, I I think he does. I think he does fine, man. He you know he got all attributes. He got striking. He got grappling. Very very good grappling. Very good wrestling. So, ah uh, yeah, I I I I see him entering the mix. You know why not? You know he's a championship level. Defending his belt a bunch of times. I mean, you'd be crazy to say no way. He's not gonna do good here. Blah blah blah. I mean, any champion, any weight. If they chose to do something, go up to a other weight class or whatever weight class they want to do, I think they'd be fine because they understand what needs to be done, the steps that need to be taken, and they're going to take it. Do you think he'd be worthy of an immediate title shot? He is the second longest reigning champion in the UFC right now. Uh, you know, we see what happens, you know. That's not my job. I'm no matchmaker. Uh, some, sometimes when you do see these matchmakers making matches, you just... Scratch your head on some of them. So, at the end of the day, that's not my job. You know, I mean, we see. You know, I'm here. <laughs> I've been here. I've not been taking years off. I've been fighting the next contender, the next challenger, whoever it is, whoever it may be. I mean, we see what happens. Well, let's say you were a matchmaker, more specifically a max maker, and you could choose your next four fights after this one with the Korean Zombie. You can choose whoever you want, whatever weight class. Don't worry about with the matchmakers. That that's you right now. If I'm putting you in that chair, what would you like your next four fights to be after Korean Zombie? Should you be successful uh, when you face him in Singapore? Uh, the title fights, title fights. Uh, I mean, uh, I I don't have to say too much names, but or any name to be honest. I just want title fights, title fights, big fights, big fights that get me to the title fights, whatever it is. But if if I go out there and make a stamp, undeniable. Put a stamp on this Korean zombie fight. I want title fights, man. Title fight, title fight, title fight, title fight. Whatever title fight it, it may be. Just just title fights. So that's a lot more important to you than like big money fights or anything along those lines? Like it, would you would you if they gave you said to you you can have you can fight Volk or you can fight Conor McGregor and have a rematch with him. Is, is Volk the easy choice for you because of the championship ramifications? I mean we see what happens, you know, with, with those that I mean if they make me and Connor, they'd have to make some type of title fight, you know. So I don't know how they would do that because the BMF belt is gone. Maybe they make they make another title fight. Maybe like what him and Mayweather did, money fight or something, a money fight belt or something. But <laughs> would would be considered a title fight. So at the end of the day, we see what happens, you know. But I'd love to be title fights, you know, or just being the best, you know. If, if people think so that this guy can beat me, I just want to prove them wrong. Do you think of the BMF Championship as a title fight? Like, if they said, we'd like you to face Justin Gaethje for the BMF Championship, does that appeal to you? I mean, last time I heard, you get paid like a champion. So, yeah, why not? You know, at the end of the day, that'd be fun. Um, you know, I did a breakdown on that fight. Uh, uh, Gaethje, me and Gaethje does have some beef. We do have some beef. He almost he almost exposed me to the world at that one weigh-in when he put the, the towel over the scale. So, you know, that stayed in the back of my mind. But... <laughs> All jokes aside, man, you got not, I got nothing but love for Gaethje and stuff. But that, that that that's another fight that a lot of fans that they've been wanting to ask, they've been asking me to go up. So never say never, man. We see what happens, you know. First things first, though, it's Korean Zombie. Like I said, bro, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to see the best Korean Zombie that there will ever be come uh, August 26. With the time off, with his experience, I I I I, I mean. You know he's doing everything that's right and, and making sure that he's coming back with him. But even the talks of this might be his last retirement fight, it's uh, it's crazy, man. I, I can't wait. I, I look forward to this, this, this. These are the kind of fights that excite me. You and your family are big into anime. Uh, Korean Zombie is almost kind of like an anime villain in a sense. You know, he's got that yeah. humanity to him. But, you know, when, when you bring out the zombie, we, we know what that man's capable of. Do you, th do you approach the fight that way a little bit? Yeah, for sure, you know. I mean, talking about anime, go check out my uh, go check out my merch store. We just dropped new merch. We we dropped something for you anime lovers in there. So I can't wait. You know, shopmaxhollow.com. Check it out. If you want to be the villain, 
it never ever ends well for the villain unless you're Itachi. You're 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 a uh, you're a secret vi- you're you're a villain, but you're actually a secret hero. So at the end of the day, I'm not too worried about it. I, I can't wait to go out there and just uh, you know, I should have octagon with this guy. You know, it's it's been years that we should have fought, and we're finally here, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. My son's been uh, chipping away at One Piece this summer. How many episodes, uh, how far into One Piece? Are you, you're not up to date on it or anything like that, but how far into uh, One Piece? I did, I, did, I did not watch One Piece at all, but Rush is, Rush is chipping away at that bad boy right now, and it's uh, it's quite a lot. You know, I might I might get into it because Netflix is doing that live series, and one of my friends that's like a big One Piece stuff, and he kind of saw it, and he was reading until he was saying, it might be worth watching for the live series, so I might be waiting for that. Well, when Max retires eventually, you said you kind of want to step away from the fight game a little bit. I mean, you'll have all the time in the world to watch every episode of One Piece that's ever been made. Take you like four years to do it, but you you can enjoy the experience with your family. Maybe, maybe we see what happens. You know, we see what happens. I like, I've been liking a bunch of slice of life, slice of life uh, uh, animes is the best. You know, feel good ones. So we see what happens. You know, I'm just just loving life right now. Uh, last thing I want to ask you about, uh, and it's obviously a very difficult subject given that Hawaii is your birthplace and the, the place that you represent and train and live year-round. Um, there were the wildfire, wildfires in Lahaina, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and I'm, I'm curious um, what, what sort of out, outreach has been done and, and how you're um, potentially going to do your part to, to help out as much as you can. I know that obviously with the fight coming up, it's hard for you to, to not uh, focus entirely on that, but uh, tell me about what's going on there and uh, what, what, you're, what you're planning. I mean, you can see the news worldwide, man. Uh, the people at Lahaina, either, you know, they just be straightforward with you. The people of Lahaina was let down, you know. The state, the government, uh, they just failed. I don't know if you've watch, been watching the news or hearing anything. No sirens, no warnings, no nothing. And just, and now that's what they have. They have nothing. Families gone. Dead toes on the rise. Missing people is like a thousand something plus, and we only had like 99 deaths. So that that number is gonna drop dramatically as they keep going, because they only searched like nine or ten percent of the area. So I mean, the only thing I can say is all to the Lahaina people that are uh, affected directly. Stay strong. Us people are with you. Shout out to when the state, the government felt like there was lollygagging, the people there s- stepped up and helped the people who, who needed help. The The Hawaii community period came together as one. And, and it's showing, you're seeing, you can see an Instagram or whatever, you can show it off. And if, and if you want to help, uh, and you have an IG and you want to donate, uh, Lahaina un- uh, on IG, Lahaina underscore Ohana underscore Venmo. You can send money directly, donate money directly to fam. There's a bunch of family Venmos up there or, or, or PayPal's, whatever it is. It's up there that you can just directly give money straight to them. And if you are donating, please do your research on who you're donating to. Uh, a couple of the people that that I've been doing, been working with, I work with Hawaii Food Bank here. Maui Food Bank is a legit one. Hawaii Foundation Community dot org or dot com is a legit one. Um, just be smart, man. If you guys want to help, they're, they're asking for it to, to send a bunch of stuff. They have a lot of stuff, but if you can donate, donate what's needed. They need gasoline ice money to get this these kind of things solar power stuff it's just uh like i said man it's a tough time it's a rough time uh for hawaii right now and and for me being able i know i fight i know i need to focus you know i always go on there with 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 with, with hawaii on my back all of hawaii and it's a little bit heavier going into this one but if I can be a real light for like a minute, five minutes, or whatever it can be, just uh, that that that's what it that's what I'm that's what I'm here for, you know. Just make them forget for even a second. That's what I'm here for. And then when we get back, 
we can figure out other ways to try and uh, support them and and you know our ancestor our, our ancestors is so strong the 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 spiritual power the mana we call it mana here is surging through the local people and it's just it's just awesome you know one thing i would say to lahaina people that is directly impacted that lost everything stay strong stay strong us people us hawaiians we got your back we're going to figure this out you know this ancestry land right now that's your land don't let nobody try to short arm you or or, or, or try to bully you into selling or, or selling your land and stuff. We need to rebuild. And we will get to that stage of rebuilding for you guys. So please keep holding on. I know it doesn't look like there's no end near. Or even no beginning near. But we're all here for you. And we will continue to be here for you. And we are stronger together. It takes a village. And, and you can see the motion, the village, the social media, whatever it is. You can see it here because of the people of Hawaii, you know, and um, I'm just blessed to, to be a part of this and having this opportunity to go out there on August 26th and, and just spread a little bit more light on top of the things that's going here and, um, you know, and hopefully making people forget, even if it's, like I said, for a second. Well, Max, that's very heartfelt. Uh, I know you always wear your heart on your sleeve and you also carry uh, Hawaii with you as a big part of who you are. So um, as Max said, uh, make sure that you, you're you donating to reputable causes that are going to help the people of Lahaina uh, after the wildfires. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, Max. Really appreciate it. And wishing thank you brother. the best and, and, your, and uh, the, the, the people of Hawaii all the best as well during a tough time. Thank you, brother. You have a good one.